Hello everyone, I'm Colin Cadet. Today I'm going to be making this little adjustable kerf maker jig. Uh, typically you would use this on your table saw and you use it for setting up your saw to make dado cuts and it makes perfect dados. So stick around and watch how I make this. Okay, let me start off by telling you the parts that we're going to be using today. So I've got two pieces of wood, and these are hardwood. You do need hardwood. These are seven inches long. I cut them a little bit longer because I want to have a little bit of room to trim them. When I cut them, I also took a little slice of wood. This is three-eighths of an inch wide, and of course it's from the same wood, so it's the same thickness, and it's about three inches long. I'm going to be trimming it down as well. The other thing you're going to need is a bolt and a washer, uh, and I'm using a hex head. This one has some black paint on it. That's not going to make any difference. Um, and if you can find a wide washer, um, that is ideal. Deal. If you can't find one, um, uh, any washer that will accommodate the wing nut will work just fine. Now I've moved over to my router table because what I need to do now, I need to cut a rabbit in each one of these and the purpose of that rabbit is that so these two pieces will sort of join together and be able to slide back and forth. Now the material that I'm using is three quarters of an inch and half of three quarters of an inch is three eighths of an inch. So I'll be able to use my marking gauge to set that up on the router. I'm going to be using something called a rabbiting bit and a rabbiting bit allows you to change different bearings in the top and I put a bearing in here that will allow me to cut a three eighths inch rabbit. Okay, so those versions work well, and the reason you can tell that is they just slide together just perfectly. They don't, there's no lump. The next thing I need to do is, you can see the two pieces here, I need to drill a hole for my bolt to go through. And of course, the bolt needs to go through one section, and it wants to overlap the other one. So in this case, I would have to drill the hole so that it would be right about here. But the first thing I need to do is to figure out the countersink, because on the back side, it wants to be countersunk in. So the way we do that is we take this, and because we have, we're working with the rabbit now, I can take that, move that around to the back, and in this case, I have a washer here that's the same size, roughly the same size as the head, and I can put that little washer on there, I can think I can show you what that looks like. So something like that. And then now I can use that as a measurement of where the center hole is because I have my Forstner bit in here and that's the first thing I want to drill is my Forstner bit hole and then I can drill my hole that's going to be the through hole for my bolt. Now the reason we drill a Forstner bit first, you can see that I already have a mark in there so that when I take this bit out, I can put my through bit, the bit that I'm going to use for the through hole, and it will be automatically centered because I've already got the mark from the Forstner bit in there. Okay, there's one part that I forgot to mention that you need, and that is a little flathead screw, and you can see how that's flat on top, uh, and this particular one is a countersink, some people call these countersink screws, but they're actually flathead screws, and I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is screw that into there, because that's going to be one of our measuring uh, parts of this little jig. So on this part, there's one part that kind of floats, and there's another part that's going to have this this little wood piece glued to it, and it also has the little screw in the ends. Now the other thing that I didn't mention yet, um, I did take this over to my sliding miter and I cut that, and you can see that that's nice and straight 
and flat across there. So you just need to make double check to make sure that that's good. We're going to use some super glue today. So we're going to use some activator to make sure that we get a nice quick good bond with that. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue down inside here because I want to glue that head in and it's a little runny but I'm what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spritz the bottom of this so that when I drop that glue that bolt in there it should instantly lock there good and tight now the next thing I'm going to do I wish this glue wasn't quite as runny as it is but We'll work with it. I'm going to put some super glue on the end and then I'm going to spritz the other side. And then I can put those two together just like that. I don't want to let it touch the table because I'm afraid it'll glue itself to the table. And that should be good right there. Okay, so there we have that, we have that, uh, and now you can see why I wanted to have a wide washer. Now just for fun, I'm going to put this washer on, but I'm, I'm going to show you that even a very thin washer will work fine on there. It looks like I got a bit of glue on the threads there. And basically what we want to do, this thing is going to be sliding back and forth in a second. I'm going to show you how it works, but even with a thin washer, we'll be able to See how well, even with a thin washer on there, how well that works. I can't move that at all. But I'm going to use the thicker washer today because I have one. Uh, and if you make one of these, these are really simple to make. And if you use a wide washer on there, uh, it works just super. Now I'm over at the table saw. Uh, there is one last thing that I neglected to tell you. Uh, I've countersunk this hole. The other thing that you need to make sure of that this is flat when you've got the the jig sort of set up and and the two pieces together, it's a good idea to run this through your sliding miter or your table saw to make sure this is absolutely flat. And then you can put the screw in because if you don't do that, um, your jig is going to be off a bit. Now the next thing you need to do is to align very carefully, you need to align the, the outside edge of the screw with the thickness of your saw blade. And you can do a very fine adjustment with that. And I like my dados a little bit on the snug side, so I'm going to make my uh, the the edge of my bolt just a little bit proud of the blade and that will give me a little bit hopefully a little bit um, smaller data or a little bit tighter data so okay let's go ahead and make our first cut and this is the wood we're going to be cutting the data in of course there's my little jig and I've already preset the wood there but you can I can just show you that that fits in there how that fits in there nice and snug like that so we'll take that out of there now you always need a stop and the purpose of the stop is because you're going to make two critical cuts this cut and this cut and if you were to measure this that you'll find that if you look at that just like that you'll find that this width here is exactly this width minus the blade. So that's why we need a stop on there to measure that. And of course with this you can move the fence back and forth anywhere you want and I just have this you can see I just have this clamped on here. So I'm going to start off by making the short cut then I'll turn it over and do the long cut and then we'll cut out the little pieces in between. Okay, now that that blade is stopped, let's try that fit, and there it is. And you can see that that's a nice, it, that wood is actually stuck really, stuck really well in there. You can see that that's a nice, 
tight fit, although it does, it, it will move back and forth, but it's a nice tight fit. That's exactly what I want. So that's just how quick and easy that little jig works. Well, that concludes my video for today. And you know, there's lots of different versions of this around if you look around on the internet. I like this one because it's quick and simple to make. And you can see even using um, super glue, it makes it even quicker and simpler. So, uh, but for those of you who have stuck around this far, um, just to let you know that uh, I plan to be at the Atlanta Wood Show in the middle of March, only a couple of months away. Uh, so I've uh, booked my tickets and uh, all going well. Uh, maybe I'll see a few of you there. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.